Okay, so I just went to the hardware store and I bought a bunch of hardware so that I can uh, assemble the motor and the housing and all of that stuff for the bicycle generator. So uh, this is what I bought. I already had these, uh, these two sockets. These are just from my little mechanics tool set. Uh, so this is a 5 16th inch socket and this is a 11 32nd inch socket. Uh, all of this stuff is SAE. Sorry, I'm not doing metric right now because I, I live in the United States and, uh, you know, we have the widest selection of SAE parts. I would have gotten metric if I could, but, uh, you know, the selection of metric stuff just isn't that uh, prevalent around here. So I apologize, but, you know, substitute your own if you're going to build one of these. Substitute your own metric uh, stuff. Hardware. Uh, so I got some thread locker because I... I didn't have enough room to use lock nuts. I normally prefer using lock nuts, but uh, you know, in in the in the diameter that I needed for these uh, screws, they didn't have the length that I needed to use lock nuts. So I'm using thread locker instead. Uh, using blue, not red, because blue is removable. So uh, here, this is the mounting hardware necessary for the for mounting the motor itself to the to the top. You can see I've got these holes, well, here. I've got holes in the top of the base plate. This is the, uh, the 3D printed uh, housing that I made. These four holes here are what this hardware is for. And then these six holes around the outside are what this hardware is for. So uh, real briefly, let's see, the, the six quantity hardware, those are eight 32nd by three inch screws. I've got uh, six of those. I've got six number eight lock washers. I've got six number eight washers. I've got six 832nd nuts. And uh, yeah, so that's it for the outer, the outer screw set. And then for the fours that mount the, uh, the actual motor to the housing, there are six thirty-second by three-quarter inch machine screws. Uh, number six washers, I've got, let's see, I've got four of these, I've got eight of these, and I've got four six thirty-second nuts. All right, so a little more in info about the, uh, the housing here. So this is the part that is going to bolt onto the uh, Kurt Kinetic trainer. Yeah, so here's the Kurt Kinetic housing. You can see there are six holes around the outside of this housing. And this thing is going to just bolt right on top like this. And then the, uh, it's probably easier to show you if it's laying down. So it's going to bolt on like that. That's the roller where the wheel rolls. And then the motor is going to bolt on right there, okay? And so on the inside, in the previous video, we made the, uh, the, mount, the uh, traction adapter, I guess you could call it. That's going to go inside here, so it won't even be visible while it's running. This part is 3D printed. Uh, as you can see, there are like some, some little gaps and holes in the, in the surface there. Uh, I'm not real sure what caused that. I think it's a settings issue. I, I designed this part using a caliper, just like I designed the other one. And when I went to slice it, uh, I'm using a really old printer at the moment. It's called a PrinterBot Plus version two. So it's actually made out of like laser cut wood, uh, laser cut um, plywood. And it's not the most accurate thing in the world. It's got some real problems, some reproducibility issues. I've modded it a lot over the years, trying to make it more reliable. But I've never gotten really, you know, pretty quality prints. They're usually functional, but that's about it. Um, when I went to slice this, I usually use Skein Forge because I get better results with Skein Forge with that particular printer, even though Slicer was the standard even when that printer came out. Uh, when I went to slice this with Skein Forge, it wouldn't slice. I, I don't know why. It's a very simple part. It's just, you know, cylinders and, you know, holes cut out. I mean, it's, it's a very... There's nothing to it really, um, but it would not slice. I left it running for like eight hours and it just hung. So I, I, I bought, I actually bought a new printer. I bought an Ultimaker 2 Plus. 
which is a very high-end printer. It's even better than the MakerBots, from what I hear. I will be reviewing that in the coming days. Uh, that'll almost certainly be part of this project and many, many more in the future. I'm really excited about it. But it didn't arrive when I, you know, before I was printing this, so uh, I printed this out on the PrinterBot uh, Plus. Now, I read that the Ultimaker 2 Plus uses software called Cura to do its slicing. And it turns out that PrinterBot is actually shipping, uh, or they're actually recommending Cura these days too. So I thought, well, I'll try out Cura. So I, this is actually printed using Cura. Um, I used the PrinterBot version two profile in Cura. It didn't turn out great. Um, I've got a heated bed, but you know, I've got, I've got extrusion problems here. Like you can see at the top here, there's like a little, there's a dimple. Uh, Right here, I had some curling happen, you know. I've got all kinds of little holes in the top. It, it's not a perfect part, but structurally, I think it'll do. I think it'll do the job. So uh, I, I will probably reprint this using the Ultimaker at some point, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun because I, I can't wait to see if the, you know, how much better the quality is. Um, probably there are settings that I could tweak to, you know, fix this whole problem. I'm just not sure what's causing it at the moment. So uh, anyway, so that's it. I, I, think I, have a, I think I have a quick clip of this part actually being 3D printed and I'll show that now. All right, so the thing with PLA plastic is uh, it comes in these like one kilogram spools and they're not free. They cost like $45 each. So uh, to give you an idea how much these parts cost, we typically weigh them. So the, uh, the adapter is 42.2 grams. And then the second part, this one took 16 and a half hours to print. It weighs 192 grams, so quite a bit heavier. Okay, and let's, uh, let's get started with assembly. Okay, so I've got a choice to make here already. Uh, I need to decide whether I put the screws through on this side or whether I put them through on the other side. Um, I think I'm going to go with this side because uh, that way I'll get to see the bolts sticking out on top and I'll get to see if they're loosening up. Uh, and this way there's a little bit less of this protruding from the bottom. I think the bolts take up more space. So uh, all I need is a washer and the nut or the, the, the screw. And I'm just gonna screw that on. Probably can't see that. These holes are a little, they're a little snug. So they actually thread in. You can't just slide them through. Okay, I'm not gonna make that tight, just snug enough. Okay, so now we have something that we can mount our motor to. <laughs> I actually made the measurements correctly. I was a little worried there for a second. So that goes down snugly on top of that. And on the inside, the, uh, the little snap ring is not rubbing on anything. So that looks good. So now I actually don't have room to put the uh, washers on the top. I was a little worried about that. So I think that'll be fine. I'm just gonna put a bolt down on top instead, uh, or a nut rather. Uh, so I'm gonna put thread locker on these and just put these down without a washer. I think it'll be fine. So maybe, maybe when you buy these, instead of buying uh, three quarter inch uh, machine screws, you should buy four one inch mach machine screws. It won't, uh, it won't affect the rotation of the motor if, if this is longer. And that way you'll be able to use a washer on top. Okay, so for these guys, I'm just gonna thread locker them one at a time, I think. Just a little dab will do it. 
you want to put these on by hand because if you use a tool, you're likely to strip them out. That would be very bad. Then once they're threaded on, you can tighten them up. I don't know how tight to make them. It's just PLA plastic. So I'm not going to make them particularly tight. They're really just to keep, you know, they're to keep this from, from pulling off this way because the plastic is what's holding it against torque. So they don't really, they're not really structural. All right, number two. Again, I really don't know how tight I can go with this. I don't want to go too tight. I think that'll be fine for now. Oh, you know what? I'm dumb. I bet what's happening is it's rotating from one side. Much better, okay. I feel much better about that. You dabble, do you? Now you really, really, really don't ever want to get thread locker inside your motor. I've done that before, ruined the bearings on a brushless motor. Thank God it wasn't one this expensive, but yeah. Keep that thread, you do not ever want to pour the thread locker anywhere over the motor. That's a terrible idea. You'll ruin your motor. Voice of experience here. It's definitely awkward doing that with only one person. I was hoping to have my son help me with this. He helped me pick out, pick out all the parts, but he's upstairs playing video games. I could go get him, but Figured I'd let him, let him play. All right, cap up our thread locker. We'll use that again in a minute. Okay, that motor is on there. It's not going anywhere. Okay, the next step is going to be to uh, attach the colleted adapter piece to the shaft of the motor. We definitely want to have that tight before we try putting the housing onto the curd kinetic. Now, um, I'm a little worried having having gotten this far because in my in my previous testing the collet was slipping uh, as I would tighten down this nut here so and I'm not I was thinking before that I would use like a uh, like a belt wrench or something to to keep this from moving while I tightened it down but I don't think that's going to happen now so I don't know I might get some slippage that might you know, dramatically affect the amount of wattage that this creates. I'm not really sure. So, um, but I figure we'll, we'll deal with that. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You know, just getting this on there and proving that it generates electricity is kind of a win all, all of itself for me. Because uh, I've never made a generator before. So, all right, so we'll just slide this on there. Then we'll tighten it down. It's already slipping. Well, this is not the best design I've ever made. <laughs> It'd be nice if I had ports in the side where I could like reach in with a tool and grab that or something. This is uh, this is not going how I expected. There's very little room in there for my fingers, and I have very small hands. All right, so this is pretty obviously a design flaw. I think what I'll do is I'll modify this part so that it comes in two pieces. There's the, uh, the outer ring, and then there'll be a plate at the bottom, and these through bolts will sandwich it all together. That way you can get in at the collet and you know tighten it, hold, hold it still while you're tightening the nut on top. But for this one, because I just wanted to get this done today and I'm impatient, I, I put the, uh, the deep socket on top, and then I just tap it with a rubber mallet 
and then I tighten, and then I tap, and then I tighten, and then I tap, and I tighten. I really wouldn't recommend you doing this uh, for yours because uh, you run the risk of you know bending the shaft, and that's a really bad idea. But I think for mine, I think you got it tight, tight enough to use. So uh, yeah, I will I will redesign that part, but in a pinch, tapping it probably works. All right, now for the fun part. Let's make this thing up. So for this, we're going to be using uh, these. What are they? Uh, eight, eight by thirty-two by three inch long screws. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these lock washers. Now, usually a lock washer serves a purpose uh, in place of Loctite, but in this case, all I'm using these lock washers for is to give me a little bit of distance because the head of these screws gets pinched by these fins and it doesn't contact the metal plate properly. So I'm just using the lock washers to give me a little bit of distance there. So those are gonna go through like that. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and mate up the dowels. By the way, pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Ah, just slides together like that, no big deal. A little bit of Loctite. Don't want these dropping off. I'm just gonna make it snug. I'm not gonna tighten it down too much. Then we'll move on to the next one here. This is cool. You can already see the motor turning as the, as the roller turns. I'm getting excited. <laughs> Almost ready to make some electricity here. I've got Sturgis outside the house right now. Not really. My neighbor owns a motorcycle. Okay. I'm actually gonna flip this over. I don't know if it matters, but I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna tighten down the opposite two next. Never noticed it before, but Loctite smells funny. It smells like toilet or something. Okay. Let's see how many more left. I think I've only got one left. Oh, the last one. So cool. Oh man. Okay, so let's see, are all of those tightened down? Looks like they are. Oh man, I think it's done. Look at that. Well, I guess the next step is to hook it up to a bicycle and uh, see if we can measure some electrical output. Sweet.